guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a awesome one for you today. Heavily requested, The Shortest Straw by Metallica. Yes, we are literally clipping our way through the entire Metallica catalog. One at a time, month after month, year after year. So, um, just still a lot of great stuff yet to get to, even though we're at 30 some Metallica songs now. So please, if you like Metallica or you like any of the lessons that I do, please subscribe to the channel. Click that little, ring that little bell too, so you'll know when uh, you'll be notified, you're supposed to be at least, whenever I release a new video. And please go check out guitarlessons365.com. That's where I put all of this stuff up there. In addition to that, I have a complete guitar academy with all my guitar courses, improvisation, um, theory, ear training, technique, you name it. Tons of courses there, and I'm adding tons of stuff to it every single week. So I hope to see you there. So for the shortest straw, we are going to do all the rhythms and all the solos in this one video. So um, grab some coffee or something. It's going to take a bit. So uh, we are in standard tuning, uh, which is also great about Metallica. They can write riffs that rock, that don't have to be tuned down to G. Um, so let's start here. We are in standard tuning. Now that intro, uh, a little bit of a free time thing. <laughs> So it's good if you can kind of eyeball uh, the other guys of the band when you're doing that stuff. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at this, um, how we're doing this. So it's just the, I'm going to say just the fret numbers, but I'm playing the full power chord, two string power chord off of each one of those, and kind of palm muting, obviously, so y you know that. If you're, if you're watching this video and have a um, even a, the slightest chance of playing the song, <laughs> in full, you know what I'm doing, I don't have to walk you through it as much. So we have a zero, one, zero. Again. And then one more time. And then we're gonna put a little tail on the third time. Three, one, zero. So like this. And then we're back to the zero, one, zero. And then here we're gonna mix it up a little bit, a little bit. Ring out. So we start with, so we did that one little zero, and then we did the zero one zero again for a second time, and jumped over to the first fret of uh, power chord off the A string, back to the first fret power chord off the low E, and then that open E chord we're just gonna let ring. So like this. All right, then back to zero one zero a couple times with that tail on it, three, one, zero, and then back to zero, one, zero, a couple times, and the second time you just let that ring. So stuff like this, which seems pretty random, um, it's not random, they, they, they do it the same way every time live. Um, it's something, but it's, you really just have to really know the sound of. It's very simple, the chords and what they're doing, it's just something that you just gotta really know by ear to kind of follow along and, and not get confused. So once again, here we go. Okay, so that last time they're letting that little E ring, and then they go into the main riff of the song, which is a lot easier to kind of follow. Um, it's also the chorus of the song, so it's like this. So if you guys saw my favorite Metallica riffs, my 10 top 10 favorite Metallica riffs, that made the list. I like that. That just kind of grooves. All right. So um, now we're going to go zero, one, zero. And there's a little gallop in there. So kind of quick little down, up, down. And then back to the one, zero, one, zero. And then the low E hit once. Power chord there at the um, third fret off the low E. The open E once again, and then the power chord there at the first fret of the A string. So it is. this. 
So start over. Now just reverse those two power chords instead of going the second time through, start on the top one and then work your way back down to the third fret of low E. Start over. So the second time through that riff, you know, when we're getting ready to reverse the chord again, instead of doing that, you're going to jump up to the third fret and play it twice, then second fret once, and then first fret once. And that's going to be the very end of the riff at which you're going to repeat uh, all of that again. So all of that together. Now you'll hear that when they repeat it in the chorus, the kind of the beat to the second half of it is a little bit different, a little bit more laid back and kind of groove oriented, I guess. So that's the main riff of the song that you're going to hear, um, and that's also the chorus of the song, so you can kick that uh, out of the way too when it comes later in the song. Now we have this thing called, I call it the melody riff, um, but it sounds like this. <laughs> That takes us into the verse. All right, so um, it starts with an E power chord, and then slide into the seventh fret on the A string to eight on the um, D string, and then he plays the seventh fret on the D with a slight bend on it, kind of almost sliding back, bending back to that eight, and then back to that eight. So. We go. When you get that eight, and then back to that seven on the A string, so it is. And then we get kind of back to that dun 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 dun, dun kind of little, little slight little you know burst in there. But you, like I said, you should be able to if you're following along the song, you know, you, you, I don't have to like tell you every single downstroke and upstroke. So this. So it's a quick little zero one. Power chord, a couple, a couple times. So the power chord there is off the first fret. Then repeats that exact same thing two more times. Now this is when there's um, the first couple of times through you're not hearing any. Uh, there's no the band isn't playing with it. So this riff is going to be played a little bit differently. They're not going to play that so many times. But at the very beginning, the first time you hear it, you hear them play that three times all together. So will, will that zero one be in the tail of the riff? So like this. One. Two. So I did it three times. Now the fourth time here, we're going to do the same riff, except it's going to be the third fret power chord instead of the first fret. Then that riff again. The power chord that time is going to be at the fifth fret. So three times at the one, one at the third fret, and one at the fifth. And then we end it like this. So that's just. So that's just picking the A, the, the, the fifth fret on the um, low E string. And then seven on the A, and then eight on the D. And then you're gonna play seven, hammer to eight, pull back on to seven, pull off to five. And then jump back down here to the third fret power chord off the low E string. So we just kind of play the, then two, and then one. So you still do that same. So 
yeah. just doing it off the full, full part. So that ends the riff. And then that gets us to the verse, which sounds like this. Which basically to the pre chorus. So that is just that same little rhythm with a gallop in it on the low E string, and then 0101 zero, one, zero, one there. And then second time through, it's just 0303. Zero, three, zero, three. So like this. Repeat. And then the second time through it, the ending is going to be three, two, one. So let me play it just slow for you there. Three, two, one, and repeat. And then we're going to change it to F sharp. So we're going to. So you just basically start off the second fret power chord, same rhythm. So it's going to be two, two, three, two, three, like this. And then the second one's a little bit tricky. Um, and when he plays it live, Hetfield goes. So he kind of plays the power chord, goes and hits the A. Power chord, open A power chord, and then it's gonna grab just the thumb real quick on the the second fret, just the low note, the F sharp there on the second fret of the low E, and then back to that power chord. So we have this, and then back to the the, the first way of doing it, and then we're gonna go that little chromatic again, but it's gonna be two frets higher than before. Five, four, three. All right, then we get to the pre-chorus. Really fun to play. Sounds like this. into the chorus there, that killer riff that we did earlier. All right, so this one's fun to play. So we're going to start with that melody riff. That is ending with the first fret there. You're going to do that twice. And then after that little, that second time through going to 0101, zero, one, zero, one, you're going to jump up and grab the power chord, the power chord off the second fret of the A string. Hit it four times. One, two, three, four. And then we have this. So that little uh, lick that they're repeating twice is playing the second fret on the D string. And we're in on three. Pull back off the two. And then to the open D. So you do that twice. And then jump up here. Power chord off the seventh fret of the A string. You can hit the low E with it, like, th like that. Kind of going back and forth between the power chord and the low E string. And then hit it and slide up to the eighth fret, and then go to the seventh fret of the low E string power chord, the B power chord. Slide it up to C, and that's it again. Go back to that little legato lick twice again. And then you're going to start the next time through with this the open A power chord. And then once again, and then that legato lick. All right, so that all together is.
All right, so that goes into that chorus riff. Now, the chorus is that main riff that we did um, at the beginning of the track um, that I've already um, said how I feel about it. I think it rocks. All right, then we get to the melody riff again, and this time, out of that chorus, we do the first fret ending just once, and then the third fret ending, and then the fifth fret ending. So just you're just playing through that riff three times with the first, third, and the same ending that we did before. And that takes you back down to the same verse that we did before, same pre-chorus. That pre-chorus riff is not going to be the same the next time we hear the song, though. Um, and then the same chorus riff. And then uh, we start going into the melody riff after that second chorus. We go into the... That melody riff ending on the first fret twice. And then we get to the chords that are underneath that little interlude. So that, um, I'll show you the chords first and then I'll show you the interlude on top of it. So the chords under it. All right, and then the solo comes in there. So that's the E power chord. Then the first fret of the low uh, of the low E string power chord. And this next one's cool. You're gonna play the second fret of the low E string with the open A and the open D string on top of it. And then the third fret power chord. And then palm muted three, two, one. So we have this. solo comes in. All right, so underneath the guitar solo, just so you'll be able to follow what I'm doing here, it's the verse riff played twice, and then kind of a kind of playing some quick little chord stabs based off the verse riff, so it's a little bit different. Um, and then we have a, a, a little bit different group of chords uh, to end it. So let me go through real quick. So it's actually that verse riff, just really the first half of the verse. Um, we don't go to the middle, the F sharp version of it. So it's just first half of the verse. Then everything stops there on that low E. Then we just have a quick little. Zero one, zero one. All right, then that same rhythm, one, three, one, three. And then back to zero one, zero one. So I have this. And then three, two, one, again. And then we get to these off F sharp. So F sharp power chord, start to let it ring. Then off a fret, the G power chord. And then we're gonna have the fourth fret there on the low E with the seventh fret of the, on the A string. And to the fifth, up to the, just bring that note up here now to the fifth fret on the low E, keeping that seven there. And then go down chromatically, start over. And then we're going to have that. So you heard Turk Hammond at the end of his solo, he does that. 
that five, four, three, and then Hetfield comes in right there. And three, two, one, and when Hetfield hits that one, Hammett will play that with him as a two. So it's, I'll pause. Um, sorry, attention to detail, I know it's crazy. Uh, uh, I don't know why I do it. Anyway, so <laughs> um, then we go back to, the, let's actually now let's learn the little interlude section. So we have, um, uh, I don't want to skip the whole, at the beginning, over those chords that we never did first. That little interlude over that is this. that it goes into the solo. So that is seventh fret on the A string. Now live, they both do this together a lot. Um, just in unison. I think maybe sometimes live they'll actually harmonize it, but on the album it's just one guitar line. Um, it's not harmonized and then you have those chords under it. So underneath these chords, we have this seven on the A, back to, to, to seven on the D, back to seven on the A. Over to eight on the D string. Hammer seven to eight, pull back off to seven. Back to seven on the A string. And then we basically do the exact same riff again, except the note on the A string is always gonna be the eighth fret. Then, then from there we're gonna go to nine on the A string, seven, nine, ten, twelve on the D. And then not ten, nine, ten on the A string, twelve on the D, back to ten on the A. Slide in there, no. and start over. And right here, that's where they're gonna stop there at the going into the solo. And then we go into this whole, um, all the chords I just showed you underneath the solo. All right, then coming out of the solo, we have the chorus riff done twice. And there's that second solo happens over that second half of the chorus. Um, and then the same verse riff, and then the pre-chorus again. Now I said the pre-chorus, the last pre-chorus you hear, um, that last one's gonna be different. Let's see if you can pick up the difference. This was such a cool part when they transitioned into that chorus riff. Uh, so anyway, so it's that power chord there at the starts the same, same so far. But now instead of what the difference is, instead of the A power chord, it's the D power chord off the fifth fret of the A string, and then the riff is the same after that. All right, so that's that. It's easy to kind of find it. The last chord, that last chorus. They're gonna cut it shorter just with that little. And then um, we go into the, the outer section, which really just kind of continues with that same riff. Um, mm -hmm. um, to, and then going into that little interlude section that's over it. Um, so there's not going to be any riffs that you're not seeing there. So at the very, very end of the song, we have this. Uh, uh, we go into it, and they hit that final hit there on the low E. What's happening there, it sounds like a different chord. One is playing the low E, and the other one, Hetfield, is playing this chord, which is the uh, 12th fret of the D, G, and the B. So this last hit, and then Hetfield's up there on top of it going. 
All right, so let me play through the solo real quick for you, and uh, then we'll take a look at it uh, phrase by phrase. <laughs> So that has got some, that's one of my favorite Kirk Hammett solos right there. So it's uh, got a lot of really cool stuff to play. Very challenging to get up to speed as well. Um, so let's dive into it. Uh, now he starts with this uh, kind of uh, like a bar dive. So he's going to pull off quickly from 9 to 6 on the G string while he's does just continues to do a bar dive uh, for the landing bar. And then you're going to release the slack in the bar and come to hit that pinch harmonic. Now, if you have a hard time finding that and you, you can't remember what pitch it is there, a good way to test it is to play the, the harmonic off the fifth fret of the high E string. You can actually do it there if you want to, but um, he does it up here. He does it as a pinch harmonic, so you can find that pitch. So you know you have the same one. You can find a spot on the G string there on your guitar there, that works. And after you hit that, do a few uh, little bar dips there. And then we have this. So that's just playing that 9, 6, 14 on the G. Kind of just doing a little bar dip into each one. All right, now the next phrase is where we're gonna have to start breaking down these little fast licks. It looks like this. All right, so uh, the, the key to this is to find the patterns. And there's a pattern to what, what he's doing here. So uh, what he's going for here is he slides into the 15th fret on the uh, B string and then over to 14 on the high E string. Now here's where the pattern's gonna start. Um, you can, you're gonna pull off, play 17, pull off 15, 14, pull off 17, 15 on the B, and then back to that 14 on the high E. So take that little six note pattern, and then take it down the scale. And, and to be honest, he, the, probably the best way to do it is to forget that second note on the B string. If you slow it down, it's not completely articulated, like very, you know, cleanly, uh, the lick anyway. And you can kind of just get away with it doing it like that, which is basically just doing that pull off there, play the 17 on the B string, and then go back to the high E string, that 14th fret. So that's the pattern. And then we'll do the same thing here. So pick 15, pull off 14, 12, over to 15 on the B, back to that 12. So we have this. And then you're going to play uh, 14, pull off 12 to 10, and then 14 on the B string, back to that 10 on the high E. So it's still the same pattern. And then over here to the 10, 12, 8, I'm sorry, Let's try this, uh, and then here is 10, 12, 10, um, 9, and then 12 on the B, and uh, back to that 9 on the high E string. And then he jumps into these harmonics. 
So that's the harmonica, the fifth fret on the B, seventh on the B, seventh on the G, and seventh on the D. And then um, really just the uh, seven on the five on the G, and you can hit the five on the, the, the D with it too. So like, All right, so from there we have, uh, as that rings, you can jump up to the next phrase, which is this. All right, so this is one of those licks that's very blues-based, um, a little bit random. So if you know how to do those kind of generic, fast blues licks, you start with that. So you basically just start with that. With the bend of the 14th fret on the G, and then hammer 10, 15, uh, 12, 15 on the B. I'm oh, sorry, play 12, play 15, and pull off the 12. So like this. So that's the first lick. And then um, kind of another variation on that, which is this, still that starting with the same bend, except now over to the 12 and the high E, then the pull off on the 15, 12, and the B. So we have this kind of like this. All right, so now he's, he'll start throwing a little bit different notes. He'll do that bend again. And he's gonna pull off 14 to 12 on the high E string, and then back to 15, 12 on the B. So we this. So we have this kind of so far. And then we're gonna kind of just do a 15, 12 pull off, 14, 12 pull off, uh, pull off on the G. And then 14, 12 a couple times on the G. So it's not really one of those licks that you, you really should worry about getting actually note for note because he's not doing it the same way anyway. He's just kind of just doing a kind of a random blues thing. You just want to end up at that spot at the same time. So you can see I'm just putting those licks. Just like that together. Then here we jump into some pinch harmonics. So the notes he's playing during that are the just just the uh, turn that delay off there. And that's just 14, 12 on the G, 14, 13, 12 on the D. Again, 14, 13, 12 on the A. Down to 10, and then back to 12. So this. So just dig in with those pinch harmonics all the way down there. All right, so the next phrase looks like this. All right, so once again, we have a pattern here that as long as you know the pattern, it's not that hard to memorize. So you're kind of sliding up on the B string at kind of the 22nd fret there, up to the um, 19th fret on the high E string. And then we have the start of the four note pattern that he repeats here. He goes. So the. So over that 19 and go 22, I'm sorry, 22, 20, 19. Then shift down to 17. So, and then from there, you're going to start that four note pattern again, continuing the next note down in the scale, which is the 20th fret, 20, 19, 17, shift down to 15. From there, 19, 17, 15, shift down to 14. And then you're going to end it with just kind of two notes, like 17, 15 on the uh, high E suit. So we this. And then you're going to start that over again, sliding up the B string to, to like the 19th fret, and then the 15 on the high E string. Then you're going to start that four note pattern again, this time 
starting at the 19th fret. So 19, 17, 15. Shift down to 14. And then 17, 15, 14, 12. And then 15, 14, 12, 10. And then 14, I uh, remember that little two note. 14, 12 to end it. So this. And then you kind of start over again. Sliding into the 15th fret on the high E string. I mean on the B string, I'm sorry. And over to the 12 on the high E, and then start that pattern again. Now 15, 14, 12, 10. And then 14, 12, 10, 9. And then 12, 12, <laughs> 10, 9, 7. And then 10, 9. So that's the basically the same pattern done three times. And then from here, we're going to do a quick little legato lick. So that's going to be pulling off kind of a stretch uh, 12 to 7, then 10 to 7, then 9 to 7. And then pull off 10 to 7 on the beat into a bend at the 10th fret right there on the beat. All right, the next uh, lick is pretty cool and sounds like this. Now that one's, uh, I'm hybrid picking that. He doesn't hybrid pick it, he alternate picks it. So he starts with a downstroke on the G string, at the 11th fret on the G, and then picks an upstroke at the 12th fret on the D. And he continues that, he just does that, and then just move it down one fret and do the same lick every time. So he alternate picks it like that, and then he'll end it like this, pull off um, 2 to 0 on the G, and then 2 0 2 on the D. So I'll go. Um, I like licks like that, that are kind of adjacent strings are going back pretty quick. Um, easier for me if you know how to alter, uh, to hybrid pick to just use my middle finger for that G string there and then just down pick on the D. All right, so any, any way you want, but it's a very simple just little pattern that he's just kind of taken down. Um, and then we have a really cool lick that sounds like this. All right, so that's cool. So that is going to be uh, kind of heavily palm muted, like, as you can see. Why don't we go 12 on the low E, 11 on the A, 14. So just remember that pattern there. And then we're going to do the same pattern off of this B flat here, which is at the 13th fret on the A string. So that's 13 on the A, 12, 15 on the D. So we this. All right, same pattern again now, starting at the 14th fret on the D string. So 14 on the D, 13, 16 on the G. And then we're going to jump up here to go to the uh, 15th fret on the G, roll over to the 15th fret on the B, and then 18. So we just, so we just, uh, I'm sorry, it goes 15 on the G, 15 on the B, 17 on the B, and then jump, skip, uh, shift up to the 20th fret. Hit that and end it. All right, from there we have just a quick little power chord, and then, um, which James will be doing, and then we have this cool arpeggio section. All right, so this is once again a pattern that's just repeated. So we're going to start here at the uh, ninth fret on the high E string. I'm going to pull off the six over to the seven on the B string. So you're going to do that twice. 
and then you're gonna double the pull off nine to six twice. So like this. So like this. And then back down to the B. So basically the pull off nine to six was done once the first two times, twice the third time. And then the fourth time, you're gonna do it once. And then you're gonna end it just with a pull off from nine to six, not going to the B. Like this. And then do the exact same thing, one fret higher. It's one of those things that just gets in your hand and it's kind of hard to count all the parts. Okay, from there we're going to do the same pattern but we are going to change the shape. We're going to do a uh, pull off from 12 to 17 and on the high E and the note on the B string will be the ninth fret. But the same pattern. And then we're going to jump up to this and do the same shape we did before, the first two shapes, but here uh, pulling off 9 to 12, over to 10 on the beat. So. Alright, so after just doing that arpeggio section once, he jumps to the same uh, melody that we played in the interlude, but instead of... Instead of doing it the seventh fret, move it up two frets just to the ninth fret. So we have the same exact thing after that. It's just gonna stop right there though, just like at that 10, uh, 12, 11. So if you know the, the, the first part, you should know that. And then there's a little power chords there, uh, the, the five, four, three. And then first fret power chord. And that would be the end of the solo section, the first solo section. Now let's take a look at the second solo, which happens, it doesn't play a lot live, but in the song, we go straight into the chorus out of that first solo and we get to the, um, the the chorus goes through one time through the riff and then the second time playing the riff there's a little uh, bluesy solo that's played over it. It looks like this. So, short but sweet, we're going to start with these double stop bends. Now, he's probably playing it here at the 17th fret of the G string and the B string together. And just pulling it with one finger downward. Now, you can do it like that. I like to, it's easier for me, especially with these floating trim systems, to keep the notes better in tune. Um, by actually using a finger for each note. So, I have the... Uh, I'm playing this with my th ring finger, the 17th fret on the G, 17th fret on the B with my pinky, and then I bend them both up. And then do it again. Release. Then pull off to 15 and play 17, 15 again. Into a bend on the, high, at the 15, 18th fret on the B string. Release, pull off to 15, and then that Kind of double stop bend again. So here it is. And then a bend at the 18th fret on the high E string. And then here he just kind of descends. 18, 17, 15 on the high E. Back to the uh, 18 on the B. And then back up. And here he just kind of does a kind of hammering on. 18, pull off to 17, back to 15 kind of thing. And then from here over to 18 on the 
beast ring back up top to the 15 on the high E and pull off 18, 15 on the B. So it's just kind of like a... It's kind of make it kind of like a bluesy thing. And then we, when we get here, we get back to the double stops. He does a that, kind of a slight bend on the 17s, down to 15 on the G and the B. And then we have this, we have this, the two double stops of 17 twice, 15 once, over to 17 on the D. So you do that twice. So like this. And then we go back to the 17, 15, just 17 once, over to 15 on the D, and then that's 17 on the D to end it. All right, so that is it for um, the shortest straw. I know it's a marathon, a lot of cool stuff. Most of this, especially older Metallica, is going to be. So I um, hope you enjoyed it. Some really cool riffs, some awesome soloing in it, um, some really cool um, challenging parts as well, too. So I'll see you guys again soon. Please subscribe to the channel. Please go check out the website. Check out my Guitar Academy. Um, and um, I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.